Hey, Foothill Hill Church, a couple weeks ago we were singing in our online service and we sang that song, More Like Jesus, and it has that beautiful bridge, uh, Oh Lord, change us like only you can. And I said something to the effect of, and maybe, maybe some of you have just been shocked at yourself. Like, man, what happened to me during this time? I, I have no regard for holiness or I have an apathy towards God. And, you know, maybe that spoke to you. And, uh, but I know for me, um, I'm always surprised during times like these how we're just not as strong as we think we are. Maybe we've confused our success in life as strength or as, as the fruit of our own good works. Maybe you were well-educated and you've been put in places of leadership, or maybe you have, you have a healthy family, and we kind of just, you, you kind of think, well, yeah, well, things are going well because of me somehow. But then something else happens. Maybe, maybe you saw other people deal with hardships, maybe you even heard about it in, in stats on the news, like other people were getting sick or other people lost this, but then it happens to you, and everything changes. God, where are you? I don't... I'm having a hard time understanding your sovereignty. God, I'm having doubts now. It's quite shameful, isn't it? We really should be a lot stronger. I think of Samson. Samson had everything going for him. He really was so, he was, he was a, a strong warrior, which is pretty much the rock stardom of that time and those people. And he would have had everybody patting him on the back saying, you're so strong, you're doing such great things. He really had a blind side. It wasn't that he was so strong. It's that he re- hadn't truly been tested. His, his price hadn't been met. He hadn't met his match is another way to say it. Now, when this happens to us, are we supposed to go, man, I'm just so terrible and, and just wallow in that? Well, we should realize we're weak and, and, and look to God. But no, we don't wallow. What do we do? We read. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Let's read James chapter 1, 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So you count it as joy. Why will we count this as joy? It's because you know what? You're going to get stronger and that's good news because, frankly, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to go from doom cloud to doom cloud and be from, I'm up here, now I'm down here, and I thought I was this, but now I'm this. No, to realize you're getting stronger and knowing that you will produce steadfastness, which means the next time something comes around, maybe day one, you'll go into it trusting God and not being rocked as hard. I'm, you know, Jess and I have been in a lot of places where you know, we moved to a new city and lost the job a week later, didn't have money for rent the next week, and... Um, some trouble sometimes with pregnancies and things like that. And I know the, that's not to say those are the biggest problems. I'm saying we saw the grace of God in our life and God carried us through it. So when we have moments that, that come up again, we say, you know what? God's going to carry us through. I saw it before. It'll happen again. Steadfastness. And I, and I pray that for you guys, that you would feel uh, the joy of growing during these times and growing your steadfastness. It's Jessica's birthday, by the way, today. I almost forgot. So if you'd like to uh, text her, oh, uh, happy birthday. Feel free to text her, 626 If you don't know that number, go ahead and just uh, Facebook message or something like that. Anyway, God bless you guys. See ya.